Today I'd like to continue our journey in the discovery of joy and uh, dealing with some of those obstacles to experiencing true joy and looking at it from both a Christian and a Buddhist perspective. What can help us deal with envy? We see that envy is one of those things that can lead to a sense of suffering when we're envious of what someone else has. Many times in life, <laughs> we see that you know people have things that are bigger and better than what we have. We can say, well, if only I could get that, maybe I would be truly happy. I remember experiencing this when I was uh, uh, meeting with some people and we were talking about spirituality and this one gentleman was was very upset uh he just recently gone through a divorce and he said you know i had the key to happiness i had a good job uh, we got a nice home uh, i was making a lot of money uh, i was able to get a boat figured i've got it made got a nice home got a boat beautiful wife. The wife, though, seemed to want more and more. Um, and she wanted certain pieces of jewelry. And he tried to work a little bit extra by the jewelry, but it never seemed to be enough. And one day, came home and she was gone. <laughs> he wondered, you know, why has she left? He just was not satisfied with what he was able to provide. She wanted bigger, she wanted better. So what do we do that can cause a great deal of suffering, this desire for more? Uh, Bishop Tudu in the Book of Joy claims that gratitude can help us deal with envy. When we become a person of gratitude. Because when we have gratitude, you realize, you know, I've been given a lot. I've been given a lot. And I'm thankful for what I have. Envy can also be a motivator. It can motivate us to try to accomplish more. So when we think of wanting bigger and better, we say we look at back at ourselves and we reflect, well, am I working hard enough? Am I putting in a true effort? Maybe I could do more. Maybe I could try this, that, I could try a, a different approach. And maybe that will help me. So the envy, in a certain sense, although it can be a negative and cause suffering, can also provide a pathway to grow and to become a more accomplished person. So, for example, I'm an athlete, and I see a certain player is hitting better than I am, and I study his technique. And I work with my coach. And I develop certain skills. And all of a sudden, I'm hitting the ball better. I'm accomplishing more. I was initially motivated by envy, but it caused me to expand my skills. Try a little bit harder. Take a different approach. So in that sense, that envy, that can be negative became for me a positive. So when you see that envy or you get that feeling of envy, Bishop Tutu suggests that maybe we should reframe the envy. Do I really need a bigger car? Do I really and truly need a bigger house? Is it something that I really need or is it something that I can do without? Okay. Maybe my smaller car is better for the environment. 
maybe my smaller car will help solving this terrible problem that we have this climate crisis. Maybe if I do my little bit and others do their little bit, maybe that will help greatly to reduce pollution, to make our air cleaner, to use less energy, to be more efficient in how I live my life. So that empty can be a beginning point can help me to reflect and look and see what should I really do with my life. Dalai Lama talks about envy too, and of course, Bishop Tutu from his Christian perspective, the Dalai Lama from his Buddhist perspective. He says, you know, envy can come when we are too focused on the material. In our life, of course, we need certain material elements. We need food, we need clothing, we need shelter. We need material things. And material things are not in themselves bad. But what happens when I am so focused on the material things in life that I lose perspective? And I just go off the deep end thinking about acquiring material goods. And I become bankrupt in my spiritual side. What about kindness? What about compassion? These are important aspects of life as well. If someone has something good, the Dalai Lama says, you can rejoice in that. Wow, look at my friend. They just bought a new house, and they're very happy. That's great. That's wonderful. It's twice as big as my house, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. I can go over and visit them. <laughs> you know, it's the perspective that you bring to it. And if you look at that type of movement with kindness, with compassion, you come up with a different attitude. Instead of being envious and dwelling on what you don't have, you're rejoicing in what the other has and looking at it and saying, that's great, that's wonderful. You worked hard for that. It meant something to you. I wish you well. I wish you many blessings in your new residence. I hope it brings you much joy, much goodness, Hope that you have many wonderful gatherings there and that you create many wonderful memories in that place. Buddhists have a concept that relates to that. It's called Murita. Murita refers to sympathetic joy. And sympathetic joy is that type of joy where you just are so happy for the other person. And so happy for what they have. You rejoice in the fact that they have achieved something good, something valuable for themselves. 